Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share some tips and tools that I have been using to help me stop impulse shopping. I've talked about this previously, how I'm a bit of an emotional shopper. It's something that I've struggled with since I was in my late teens and I've been slowly trying to incorporate tools which help me to kind of balance out that need to try and deal with any issues that I've got by purchasing something new. Now I also wanted to do this as a bit of a follow up to the video that I posted in late December, which I'm going to link up here, where I talked about the questions that I ask myself before I buy something new. So that might also be a good resource if you are sort of trying to change your shopping habits now that we are in the new year, especially as there are so many sales on at the moment and I kind of find that January is a time of year when they really ramp up and there's additional discounts and it can be very, very tempting to just go and buy something for the sake of it because it's a bargain. So I'm going to dive straight into it with the first tip and I've mentioned this tool so many times but it is my 30 day shopping rule. Now I did an entire blog post on this I am going to leave that linked down in the description box below and essentially what this is is from the day that I see something that I want to buy I save it down to my bookmarks I write it down in my phone notes or I'll write it in my physical notebook and then I will kind of revisit it over the course of that month and if after 30 days I still really want to make that purchase then I will let myself proceed with the purchase obviously there are the odd exceptions but generally I find that I stick to this rule and it has really helped me to balance the things that are coming into my wardrobe and also make sure that those purchases are really worthwhile ones, ones that are going to be versatile and that I'm going to cherish and use for months and months to come. I do find that often, especially if it's a more expensive piece, I generally end up waiting over two months, it's often over six months before I even make the splurge and generally I will also see if I can find it secondhand or pre-loved first because that's another way that you can save a little bit of money if that is something that you're trying to be mindful of. Now kind of following on from that first tip is to have a wish list or have a list that you can refer back to of items that you feel are missing from your wardrobe and actually this could apply to any sort of area of your life. It's kind of like when you go to the grocery store, you know, you make a list of all the things that you need and then you try not to stray from the list. At least that's what I personally do. And I find it so helpful to keep on track and make sure that I stay within budget for our grocery spend for the week. Same goes with your wardrobe. And I actually have a bit of a running list in the back of one of my notebooks of the items that I would really, really love to add to my wardrobe. A lot of them are more investment pieces. So they're things that I know I'm gonna be adding slowly over time. Time, and I try to stick to that obviously I'm not immune to the allure of new things and also going off piece a little bit which is why I find that 30 day shopping rule so helpful the two in combination I feel work really well uh, and if you are really good at maintaining your self-restraint and control self-control uh, then a wish list or keeping a list of the items that you want to buy over the course of the season or the year is going to be really useful for you to stop any of those impulse purchases you can kind of just set a hard and fast rule I will not buy it if it is not on my wish list and then hopefully that should be able to help you to uh, stop that trigger to purchase something when you don't really necessarily want it or need it. The next two tips that I've got are things that I have always used whenever I want to just stop myself from shopping or mindless browsing. The first is to unsubscribe from newsletters. I always find getting that little alert in my inbox, especially the ones that tell me that there is a sale on, is always a trigger for me to want to go and have a browse and that's going to be my next thing. But uh, I find if I'm not receiving those emails, I do not know what I'm missing out on. I don't get FOMO at all. I am quite content with what I have and I'm not really thinking about buying anything new. Which kind of brings me on to the next point, which is to just stop browsing, stop window shopping, stop just looking through the new in section to see what is out there. Because that in itself is really one of those things that I think triggers you to want to purchase something new because you'll see an item and you go, oh, that looks gorgeous. I'd love to have that in my closet. What an amazing piece. Like that would be so perfect. And then you sort of start that cycle of, I want to add it to my wardrobe. I'm going to add it to my cart. I'm going to purchase it. I'm at the check out now I'm going through with the purchase even though you never really intended to buy that it wasn't on your list it wasn't really something that you wanted now I do want to preface this by saying that I do think that fashion should be fun and that we should be able to have fun with our wardrobes but these are more tools if you are an impulse shopper like I can be 
then hopefully these will help you to really curb those impulses and help you make wiser purchasing decisions for your wardrobe. My next tip is to try a shopping ban or a low buy. And if you don't know what a low buy is, it's essentially where you set a whole bunch of boundaries and rules around what you can and can't purchase for the year. I've seen so many videos on this and actually I find it really inspiring to watch them. Christina from Style Apotheca did a really great series and she did a check-in every single month for her 2019 low buy year. And I am gonna link her channel down in the description box below because it's totally worth going and checking out those videos, especially if you want a bit of motivation or inspiration if you're planning to do the same. Uh, but I, I do find sometimes a shopping ban or going completely cold turkey can be a bit of a shock to the senses and it's a little bit like going on a crash diet. You know, you go on the crash diet, you stick to it for a few weeks, a month, a couple of months, and then after that you just binge because your mind is telling you you want to indulge in all those things that you had restricted yourself from for that period that you were on the crash diet. So. That's why I would maybe say a low buy might be a better option where you are sort of limiting the things that you are letting yourself like impulse purchase or just bring into your life. Uh, but it is a way to kind of help you train yourself to maybe make better purchases and also kind of understand what those things are that really are triggering you or maybe making you want to make an impulse buy. Which kind of brings me on to my next tip, which is to be really aware of what it is that is causing you to want to buy something on impulse. Is it that you've had a really tough day? Is it because you were just simply bored? Is it because, you know, there's some sort of area in your life where you're not feeling satisfied or you're unhappy? If you can identify what it is that is really driving that impulse to shop, then that actually will be the first step or one of the major steps in really uh, curbing that behavior. I know for me, it's definitely whenever I am sad or if I'm bored and I've really tried to replace particularly boredom uh, when I'm feeling bored I try to replace that act of just browsing through stores with some other kind of behavior whether it's reading a book doing some meditation uh, maybe doing a little bit of exercise and going for a walk listening to a podcast I try to feel that boredom space with something different other than shopping and I personally have found this really really useful and hopefully it's something that will help you as well. The next tip I have is one that I think we're probably all guilty of and that is to use shopping or a new purchase as a reward or a milestone and I know for sure I've definitely bought things because of milestones that I have passed because I want to signify that moment with something and I kind of associate that item with that particular milestone and that can be really unhealthy if you are an impulse shopper because it gives you another excuse to go out and just buy something frivolously um, unless you've been really planning and mapping out that purchase uh, I would say maybe try to steer clear of doing that I would say probably one of the biggest milestones for me that really acts as a trigger for impulse shopping is around my birthday and Birthdays in general, I think, are just an opportunity to treat yourself to something nice, which I think is really lovely, especially if you've got the means to do so. But for me, that time in my life is centered with a bit of sadness. It was um, the last time I ever got to see my mum before she passed away. Uh, and um, that entire lead up, I mean, it was also around the time that I had the ectopic pregnancy. There's just quite a few things that are sort of linked around my birthday that make that particular time of year quite difficult for me and generally one of the things that I do is um, I celebrate that milestone by treating myself but I just allow myself to uh, let my spending get a little bit out of control. That's something that I'm really trying to curb and I've acknowledged that I deal with my sadness by buying something new so this year instead I'm going to try and treat myself to maybe a some sort of a spa treatment, something that isn't an actual purchase, it's more of an experience so that I can associate those positive experiences with that time of year. So just trying to manage it that way, but that is an example of how you could use a milestone to let yourself make impulse purchases and why maybe it might not be the best idea to do so because it just encourages the cycle and once you get into that cycle and that habit, it snowballs and it gets worse and worse. My next tip is to avoid shopping on credit and I have talked about this a little bit before. I feel 
feel like I did a budgeting video a while ago before Luke and I bought our house. I'm going to maybe link that video up here because that could be useful for you if you are sort of thinking about your budget for the year ahead. But basically, if you're going to buy something new, make sure you can buy it in cash. And for me, whenever I am planning on buying something, I set the money aside. So I start actively thinking about how much it costs and then I start putting that money into a separate account so that I can save up so that I'm not putting myself into any debt in order to buy something for my wardrobe. I think um, I listen to The Minimalists a lot because I find their advice can be quite helpful um, particularly around finances and buying things and uh, I will link their podcast down below because it might be a really useful tool to you, for you to listen to. I always find repetition really helps. As someone who has been such a huge impulse shopper in the past when I did have credit cards I always found that as an excuse to spend more than my means and you never should be going into debt to buy yourself something new or something nice I just think that it is so much better and so much more worthwhile and also more rewarding when you've saved up and that act of saving and being patient before getting that purchase is just it's really special and it's so nice to know that you can buy something and it's a completely debt free purchase so uh, that's my advice obviously how you decide to manage your money is completely up to you but that's just what I would suggest and I just think it's a really healthy way to look at money and spending. My final tip is to acknowledge whether it is a want or a need and be really aware of that. I think that we can probably all agree that we have pretty much everything that we need in our wardrobes already and that most of the items that we are buying are generally wants and I think that's totally fine. As I said before, fashion should be completely fun and I just think that there is so much value in acknowledging and being aware of the fact that what you are potentially going out to buy is more of a want and perhaps it can be in those instances where you're thinking about that and you're thinking about parting with the money that you realize will actually you know what, I could do something else with this money or maybe I don't really want the item as much as I think I do. So that can also be a really useful tool in helping you stop impulse shopping. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. I know that these tools have really been helping me and honestly when I look at what I've bought over the last month and a half, it's basically nothing. <laughs> I really, really haven't been shopping, um, not even really buying anything for the nursery either aside from a chair. So um, I feel like it's really helped me to kind of curb that will or desire to want to go out and buy something that I don't actually need and probably won't want in a few months time. If you've got any other tools that you use that have helped you stop impulse shopping, if you kind of suffer from the same affliction, please leave them down in the comment section below as I know that those will be really helpful to anybody else who is trying to curb their impulse shopping behavior. Thank you so much for watching. If you do want to see more videos like this from me, then please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you did enjoy it. And I will see you again next time with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye.